Hi listeners, welcome to the video lecture series on power electronics. In this video, we are going to understand the basic operation of a bus converter with all its necessary waveforms. And we are going to derive the design expressions of this bus converter also. For further reading, you can follow this textbook on this corresponding page numbers. The basic circuit diagram of the bus converter is shown here. It is nothing but a step down chopper. And we are going to derive 14 different parameters related to bus converter based on the modes of operation of it. Generally, a bus converter will operate in two modes. One is when the switch S is in on condition and other one is when the switch S is in off condition. Let us go into the operation of it in detail. As I already mentioned in the uh, video lecture of uh, control strategies of chopper, there are two methods of controlling a chopper. One is what we call it as time ratio control. Other one is what we call it as current limit control. This current limit control, if you look at, it is trying to limit the current between some maximum and minimum limits. And that current is nothing but this inductor current. You will sense this inductor current. If it is less than the maximum value, it will turn on. If it is more than the maximum value, it will turn off. So, in this current limit control, the inductor current is maintained between some minimum and the maximum value. Now, let us assume that I have given the gate pulse to this switch S. So, once the gate pulse is supplied, the switch S will turn on. Once it is turned on, the circuit will become something like this. You can look at the circuit now. The inductor is connected to the source and the capacitor and load are further connected. If you look at the inductor since it is connected to the source, this end of the inductor is more positive when compared with this end. So because of which the diode is in the reverse bias condition because this is more positive and this is more negative. So the diode is in reverse bias condition. And now the inductor is connected directly to the source. Now the inductor is in the charging mode. Charging mode in the sense the inductor current will slowly rise up from the minimum value towards the maximum value. Once it has reached the maximum value, I am going to turn off the switch. So once I turn off the switch, the circuit will become something like this. This end of the inductor will become more positive because of which the uh, this end of the diode is more positive and this end of the diode is negative when compared with this end. So this becomes forward bias and the current through the inductor will be circulating. And if you look at, at this point of time, the inductor is completely disconnected from the source and now the inductor is in the discharging mode. Already when the switch S is in on, the inductor is in the charging mode. When the switch S is in off, the inductor is in the discharging mode. Because of it is in discharging mode, the current will slowly come down to a minimum value. So this duration is what you call it as off duration of the switch. Again, at, after some time, when it reaches minimum value, again I will turn on the switch now. Once I turn on the switch, again the inductor current will ramp up to a maximum value like this. Once it has reached its maximum value, again I will turn off. Once I turn off, again the inductor will discharge now and because of which the current will slowly come to a minimum value. So if you look at the inductor current, it is always between a minimum value. So let me call this as IL a minimum and it this value, maximum value, let me call it as IL maximum. So if you look at at any point of time, the inductor current is always between some minimum limits and the maximum value. The difference between the minimum and the maximum value of the inductor current is what we call it as ripple, inductor ripple. This is delta IL. Let me call it as delta IL. So if I try to find out the average value of this inductor current, it will be somewhere in the middle of these two. So this is what I call it as the average value of the inductor current. You can see that this is the average value of the inductor current. And let me call this as IL average, IL average. So this is the average value of the inductor current. So now if you look at this, since this is almost in the middle point of this uh, uh, delta IL, so I can call this first, first half, this part as delta IL by 2. So this is delta IL by 2 and this part, this part is again delta IL by 2. So this is another important point that we need to understand. So the average current is somewhere between middle of the minimum and maximum value. 
and we have derived already two expressions in the previous video that is t on is given by dt where d is the duty cycle and t off is given by again it is given by 1 minus d into t so this is 1 minus d into t so this is t on and this is t off as i said already this is the on time duration so i can write this on time duration as dt and this is off time duration so this i can write it as 1 minus d into t so these two expressions are very important in many of the places for the further derivation yes so first part of the derivation we are trying to calculate the inductor voltage and the capacitor current when the switch s is in on condition so let us try to derive this first part so when s is in on condition the equivalent circuit of the buck converter will become something like this this is positive and negative of the inductor and let me call the voltage across the inductor as vn this capacitor is connected across the load load voltage let us assume that it is v naught and let me write the load and capacitor are connected in parallel so voltage across the capacitor is also equal to v naught so this is positive and this is negative when the switch is s is in on condition i can see that there is a closed loop form here so i can write kirchhoff's voltage law expression for this closed loop if you look at the current will be circulating in this closed loop in this manner so if we try to look at this uh, uh, current it is flowing from minus to plus s of this vs is concerned so when i try to write the kirchhoff's voltage law minus to plus indicates it is a potential rise so vs comes under potential rise if you look at the inductor voltage it is flowing from the current is flowing in this direction so it is flowing from positive to negative so it is a potential draw if you look at the capacitor voltage again it is flowing flowing from positive to negative again it is a potential drop so potential rise is vs so which is equal to potential drop as per kirchhoff's voltage law so vs is equal to vl plus v not vl and v not or potential drops and vs is a potential rise again i put a remembering here this i'm trying to calculate the inductor voltage and capacitor current when the switch s is in on condition so if you look at from this expression inductor voltage if i try to write it inductor voltage vl when it is in on condition is equal to vs minus v not vs minus v not so let it be expression number 1 that is inductor voltage when the switch s is in on condition i derived it expression now let me try to write the kirchhoff current law equation at this node il is the inductor current i naught is the load current and ic is the capacitor current so when i try to write kirchhoff's current law at the node i can write il is equal to ic plus i not ic plus i not so from this if i try to write out the expression for the capacitor current ic when the switch is in on condition ic when it is on on condition is given by il minus i not so this is expression number 2 so this is the second expression that we have to understand so these two expressions 1 and 2 results as the first part of the expression first part of the derivation now second one is again i am going to derive the inductor voltage and capacitor current when switch s is in off condition low so let us go there and try to see what is the expression for vl and ic when s is in off condition so when s is in off condition you can see that the equivalent circuit diagram of the buck converter will become something like this so now this is the closed loop and the current will be circulating in this direction so when i try to write the kirchhoff's voltage law equation for the second derivative second part of the derivation kirchhoff's voltage law equation for uh, this loop this vl and v not if you look at this is also potential drop and this is also potential drop and the source is completely disconnected so vl plus v not will be equal to zero so if i try to write the expression for the inductor uh, voltage that is in the off condition of the switch that is vl off i can write it as minus v not so this is expression number 3 this is the third expression 
Now similarly, I can write the Kirchhoff current law equation at this node. If you look at again KCL, if I try to write, I again the expression of KCL at this node does not change. So IL plus is equals to IC plus I naught, IC plus I naught. If I try to write the capacitor current during its off condition, again it is equal to IL minus I naught, IL minus I naught. So this is again equation 4. So this is the second part of the derivation. Let me write all these four expressions here for better understanding of the next part of the derivation. So let me write it here. So now we have derived the expression for inductor voltage and capacitor current when the switch is in on condition. Similarly, when the switch is in off condition. Now let us move into the third part of the derivation. In the third part, we have to apply the volt second balance of the inductor. And in the fourth part, we are going to apply the current second balance of the inductor. Now let us go into these two parts at the next part of the derivation. So the third one is volt second balance. So we are going to find out volt second balance. Volt second balance in the sense the inductor on condition voltage into its time T on plus the inductor off condition voltage into its time T off should be equal to zero. This is the volt second balance of an inductor. So if you look at VL on is given by Vs minus V naught. So let me substitute it here. It is Vs minus V naught into T on is given by DT. So this T on is DT plus VL off is minus V naught. So let me try to write minus here. So this is minus V naught into T of is 1 minus D into T. So this is 1 minus D into T, which should be equal to 0. If you simplify this, I will get Vs into DT minus V naught into DT minus V naught into T minus minus plus V naught into DT is equal to 0. So minus V naught into D and plus V naught into T will be cancelled this part and this part will get cancelled each other and it is left out with Vs into DT minus V naught into T is equal to 0. So from this I can write Vs into DT is equal to V naught into T. So from this I can write Vs is equals to sorry v naught v naught is equals to v s into d t by t so this gives v naught is equals to d into v s so this is what the expression of a output voltage of a buck converter and this is again very similar to that of the output voltage expression of a step down chopper so let this be expression number five and this expression number 5, let me write it here for further simplification. The next part of the derivation is current second balance of a capacitor. So let me try to apply the current second balance. Current second balance indicates that IC when it is in on condition into T on should be equal plus IC in off condition into T off that is during the off condition into T off is equal to 0. So IC in on condition is IL minus I naught. So I can write this here IL minus I naught into on condition T on is given by DT. T on is DT plus IC off is again IL minus I naught. IL minus I naught into 1 minus D into T is equal to Zero. If you further simplify this, you will get an expression IL is equal to I naught. So this is the next expression which is expression number 6 which is very very important for further reading. So if you look at IL in the sense it is IL average. This is IL average. So IL average is equal to I naught. So if you look at here 
this green line is the il average so this il average is nothing but the load current i not so this is another important understanding from the capacitor uh, uh, charge balancing so this expression 6 is also written here for further reference the next parameter in the derivation to be calculated is the ripple in the inductor current that is delta il now let us go into that part for calculating the value of delta il you can see that this is delta il this is what i am trying to calculate to calculate delta il let me rewrite this expression one here vl on is equals to vs minus v not and we know that inductor voltage can be written as l into di by dt di by dt and this t this i is respect to on condition so i let it me write it as di on by dt on which is equal to vs minus v not so since v is equals to vl is equals to l di by dt i write this expression where di on is the change in inductor current when the switch is in on condition and dt on is the duration in which the switch is in on condition change in time in when the switch is in on condition if you look at this is the point where the inductor turns on and it is turned on till this point so the current is varying from i minimum to i maximum so this is di on this is di on so this i am talking about this part this part is di on which is equal to delta il so i can write l into delta il instead of di on i write delta il and what about dt on dt on means this duration i am talking about the duration of on condition i am talking about this duration so this duration is nothing but dt so i can write di dt on as dt so this is equal to vs minus v not and we know that v not is equals to d into vs so let me substitute expression 5 in this expression which will give give me l into delta il by dt which is equal to vs minus d times vs vs minus d times vs because v not is equals to d into vs from expression 5 so again i can take this dt here left out with because my ultimate objective is to find out delta il so let me take out this vs minus d into vs into dt into dt by l by l so this is i take this dt here bring this l down so from this expression i can take vs common if i take vs common then delta il becomes if i take vs common 1 minus d into d into vs by l and this t i write it as t we know that the time period t is inversely proportional to the frequency so i can write it as 1 by f this t i can write it as 1 by f now now delta il is equals to d into vs into 1 minus d divided by l f this is the expression for delta i l so let this be expression number 7 let me take this expression also this side for further derivation so we have derived expression 1 2 3 4 and 5 till inductor ripple current we have calculated and the remaining part we will look into the next video and part 2 of buck and butter thank you for your patience listening thank you Thank you.